All right, and we are live. So, um, welcome to uh, another hobby stream. And just to get started, I've decided to take this concept in a slightly different direction. So, the original plan was that I would do something along the lines of let's just paint models and hang out. But the reality is, is that when you are all by yourself, um, that doesn't make a lot of sense. And realistically, um, I could as much use this to do tutorials as well. So that's what we're going to do is the, the, the live hobby stream every second Wednesday is going to turn into a tutorial stream. And tonight's tutorial is on edge highlighting. So um, it is a technique that is, it's been around for a long time. If you go back and look at um, some of the Games Workshop White Dwarf magazines back in the day, they did really extreme edge highlighting. And if you look at more modern miniatures, it's present again in the more, what I would call, competition ready model so i kind of have um there's four grades of paint job that i i consider that people do there's um the minimum three color like the the like get it on the table and not be gray level um then there's table ready and that's um reasonable and most of what i'm going to focus on on this channel is probably uh, somewhere between table ready and competition ready. And for me, competition ready means you're taking this to something like the uh, Las Vegas Open or to some big competition and you are aiming to be in the top 10 for painting, top 10 for generalship, and top 10 for uh, sportsmanship. Like you want to be the all-rounder so you can't just have table ready which maybe someone who's just focusing on their general points would be um and you've definitely got to be better than three color and then the fourth level is painting competition and that's i'm nowhere near that level um back in the day um like i've got a warpstone trophy and back in the day what i what qualified as comp like painting competition level is now like somewhere around table ready competition level and that's really where i'm at especially after several years um of a break from painting so when we're doing these tutorials it's really for the new hobbyist primarily um or an experienced hobbyist who wants to try some new techniques um you'll notice there's a few changes to the cameras from last week so we still got the face cam so you guys can still see this ugly mug um the overhead cam hasn't changed much it's still showing the, the table and the palette, and although I've got an extra palette here that I don't need. Tidy this up a little bit, just put too much stuff on here tonight. Get rid of that. Um, and then the cam that was kind of like off to the side here, um, you can't really see because my hand's in the way, um, or my other pa things in the way. Um, that one I flipped to be a palette cam, so you can kind of see what I'm doing with my brush when it's not on the miniature. That's my, my thought there. So we're still working with these um, Terminators, the Blood Angel Terminators from the Space Hulk bo box set. And I'm just going to work on one tonight. And the idea with these streams is I'm going to do one technique or one section of a miniature that sometimes people have an issue with. So we're going to start with edge highlighting. We'll probably in a future stream talk about purity seals and script and like the scrolls. Um, armor joints, uh, you know, back of the knees and stuff we'll talk about. Uh, the Crux Terminatus will probably be uh, a piece. And we'll just go over each of these sections. And in that way, you'll have, like, kind of little tutorials that go over each piece. Um, the idea would be is that you can watch the first probably 10 minutes, 15 minutes of the video, and get the basics. But I'm going to do all of the pieces of the miniature over the course of the video. So it'll probably take me, you know, 30 to 30 minutes to an hour, depending on the piece we're doing. And the someone who wants to watch the whole thing can watch the whole thing. Someone who comes in later in the stream will be able to catch a bunch of different techniques. 
or catch that technique multiple times. And then if you're watching the VOD after the fact, you can, you know, watch the first 15 minutes. I'd love it if you watch the whole thing, but you just need to watch the first 10 or 15 minutes and you'll probably have the whole technique. Um, so with edge highlighting, I'm going to talk a little bit about brushes first and what brushes I like to use for different edge highlighting techniques. So I've got a couple of different brushes here. Err. Cap is stuck on this one. It's a brand new brush, and this happens sometimes. Thankfully, I have tools right nearby. Following Adam Savage's concept of first order retrievability for a lot of this stuff. It doesn't actually work for hobbying <laughs> if you don't have a, a big space. Um, all right, so what I have here are uh, a selection of different brushes. Most of them are GW brushes, but they all have different purposes in this technique. Um, so for the majority of this work, a small layer brush or something like a fine detail brush are your best bet. These are your workhorses for this particular technique. Um, they let you get into the fine areas. So like when we're dealing with parts of the helm, um, the tops of the knee pads and, um, around say the fingers here, um, especially this fine brush are going to be the, the real meat and potatoes. These other two brushes are fine for larger pieces. So I would use something like this medium basing brush to do edge highlight on a tank or a dreadnought or something larger, just because you can keep a little bit more paint in the brush and get those longer sections without going to your palette quite as much. Um, and similarly with the medium layer brush, this one also can be useful for certain miniatures. I'm not gonna use it on these because the Terminators are, again, um, they're more elite. So when I'm thinking about that, those four styles of painting again, the four layers of painting, levels of painting, um, elite units like Terminators, I'm far more inclined to spend more time on than, you know, 75 rank and file troopers. Um, so the troopers are gonna be tabletop ready. These guys are gonna be more competition ready um, as far as the effort I'm gonna put in. So I'm gonna not use as big a brush. And that's really the end result. Like with the, I probably wouldn't even do near the amount of edge highlighting. Um, now I did do some testing and I don't know how well it shows up on camera, unfortunately. It's, I just need better lighting. You know what, I should have, I don't have my spot on. That's part of the problem. Um, but I tried two different colors and that's, again, I have this test model and this is a concept I've talked about before. I really believe that having a test model is important. So I tested one side of it using um, uh, Mephiston Red as the, the edge highlight and it shows up well, um, but I wanted something a bit more distinct. So I'm going instead with Evil Sun Scarlet, which I used on the other, like literally I used, um, and again, it doesn't show, I don't know if it shows up better on this camera, I don't think so. Um, but I used Evil Sun Scarlet on this side and Mephiston Red on this side. And there is just the subtlest of differences between the two, but it really stands out the way I wanted it to here. Um, when you're doing an edge highlight, um, you're gonna want your paint a little bit thinner um, than you would for a lot of other pieces because you want it to flow nicely um, and you will likely wind up doing um, the classic Dustin Rhodes two thin coats. Um, so um, I this is a, a Capel series minute dedicated miniature brush. It's a three zero, um, which I kind of like because it uses a I like the fact that it gives you the, the size. So if you wanted to um, go and purchase a really nice brush, say like a Winsor Newton Sable, um, you could get a 3-0 from Winsor Newton. I wouldn't spend the 25 or $30 for the one brush from Winsor Newton for this. Um, I've used them, they're, they're fracking gorgeous. Um, but uh, you know, you can buy, like I bought this in a set 
of like five brushes for 35 or $40. Um, I don't know if I can get them from Amazon. I got them from my uh, favorite local gaming store um, before. But um, I'm actually planning on doing a comparison of the Citadel brushes to the Army Painter brushes, which are probably the most, the two most common brushes that people in our hobby will see. So I'm just going to get a little bit of paint. And I've just got a GW plastic palette. And you can use anything. Um, you saw that uh, piece of uh, board that I um, brought out. Or it's like a foam core. Piece of foam core that I brought out earlier. So I just want to make sure I've got nice, fine control on the brush. So you can see I'm just doing a little little squiggle so I can get really fine lines with it and so that means that I'm ready to start laying some paint down so for the most part the basic edge highlighting you're gonna use the edge of the brush along the piece of the miniature that you want to paint so I'm gonna start um, let's do the back of his armor here so this piece right here so what I'm gonna do is I'm just gonna run the edge of my brush Along that edge. Now it's a little bit, eh, it's not too bad. It's a little heavier than I would have liked, um, but that's okay. Now you can decide how much you want to do. Um, with the red, because there's lots of options here, I'm probably going to, it. there's lots of depth, I'm probably not going to do every hard surface. If I was painting a Ravenwing model, um, I would do every hard surface just to give some contrast to the armor. So we're just going to do it again here. And this is a little bit of a softer edge, so I'm, I'm okay with doing just a little bit less. I'm go back and Make sure I've got some. We'll do the other side here. And it's really just about taking your time. And it's not going to be perfect. Like, I'm probably going to clean up some of the edges here. Where it was a little bit heavier than I originally wanted. So this is the 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 edges are easier when we start talking some of the other pieces like I can't really do the edge of my brush I probably could along this section here along this rear ridge line but this piece here I'm gonna need to use the edge of my brush and just Take your time, and if you're using a contrast paint like I did here, it's always easy. You can always go back and touch it up, right? Um, Karis agrees. And it's already, like, I don't again, I don't know how well it's coming through there. I don't think it's coming through well. I'll post a photo of this up to my Facebook page. There's a link to it down below, facebook.com slash allaboutthegeek. Um, so you can see what I'm talking about. I'll leave this side open and then I'll put some more over on this side and then you can see the difference that it makes. It's subtle and that's the point. Like I liked it because it was this particular color gives just enough additional highlight now, I have some really bad painting habits. Like, I lick my brush. I've probably consumed, like, a quarter paint pot worth of paint in my years of painting. This is one of the things that you don't see when you watch um, Duncan Rhodes. Uh, I'm just going to take a little bit out there. Um, he does, I don't get me wrong, I love his work. But um, 
the here's a quick look at the technique and now we're going to jump cut to the next thing. That's great when you're trying to paint the whole mini in the course of a video. But to highlight a technique, I think sometimes it's nice to go through and do all of the, do an entire mini. See what the whole process looks like to take the mini from one step to the next. And that's what I'm pivoting this, uh, this stream to do. All right, so I've done some of those back pieces. I'm going to specifically leave that, this leg, the back of this leg I'm going to leave open so I can give you some demonstrative bits. Um, I'm a little concerned about doing this piece here because when I do the armor joint, I might overlap it. So this is a piece that sometimes you can come back and do. I'm not always, I don't always pick the best um, order of operations for some of my painting options. So we've done that piece. Now let's do the butt plate. The butt plate's another good one. So when you're thinking about the areas you want to catch with the edge highlighting, um, it'd be really tempting to say, well, I want to do the whole thing. Like it's clearly a blocky piece, but I'm going to just do this side. I'm not going to worry about getting in here, partly because the way the model is molded, there's like, I could do this little bit, right? Let's just get a little more. So we can just get this little bit here. It's really subtle. That's what we want. We don't want this to be what I would call the crayon marines of the, the 90s, right? So, um, we can get some highlight in there. And it's worthwhile to make sure that you've got a good point on your brush. Give it a rinse. Get some of that paint out of the ferrules as you go. And then just come back. Get a bit more paint on your brush. And you'll notice, okay, this dried up. I'm not bringing lots of paint. And I'm doing a really, really bad thing. And I'm leaving my paint pot open. Um, it's a bad habit. This might be a bit much. We'll see. Yeah, you know what? I'm not going to go in that area. I'm just going to bring it along the bottom underneath this tramp stamp of a Crux Terminatus. Like, how do you get a Crux Terminatus on your butt? Like, you've got one there. Why do I need one? Like, my butt is elite. That's really what this is telling me. I've got an elite ass. All right, so we've done this section. We've evaluated and decided that we're going to do the lower half of his butt plate tramp stamp. Um, and we've done the upper part of this. Now, one area that is a spot that you could think about doing that I'm not going to do is around this um, rectangular part. So it's like on the on all of the Terminators, right? Like if I grab this guy, you can see a bit of it under his cloak, this dude. Um, and that's a common place that people will highlight, but I feel that that sometimes becomes one of those excessive, do I really need that much highlighting on here? So I'm going to just clean my brush, lick it because, you know, for luck, and it's a bad habit that I just, when I get back into painting like this, I, it's a bad habit I go back to. Let's clean some of that off, grab some, and make sure that we've got a little bit there. And so now let's move over, or we'll work our the way this way around the miniature. And that's another thing that I'm bad at doing that I highly recommend. Start at one portion of the miniature and work your way around. So I started at the back top here, I worked my way down, and now I'm going to work around the front of the miniature. So that way I'm kind of targeting how I'm working. So I've got 
this little piece here of the shoulder pauldron, I'm going to skip that. I'm going to do the bottom part of the shoulder pauldron and feel free to flip your miniature over. And I'll just, this is where I can go back to the, the easier edge highlight. And if you're just starting with edge highlighting, just feel free to just focus on the technique. That's easy, right? You don't have to do all of it right away and practice on, if you've got some practice minis, maybe you bought the Indomitus box set and just want to use the Necrons. So well, then you've got all those space Marines for, for practice, paint them up like Necrons and then, you know, sell them as iron hands or something. Iron Warriors, whatever. So we're just getting that fine highlight on there. The palette can be refreshed. It's a little bit runny there. It's an acrylic paint, so you can re revitalize it. A little bit. This is the this is part of what experience will teach you is how how long you can work with your paints. Um, I am again out of hat. See, there's now I've you can, I don't know how well that's showing up. I really need to figure out how to do that better. Um, but I've got a little bit of an extreme highlight there, which is okay. Just in that one portion isn't too bad. Now getting in by this elbow, the crook of his elbow there, we're just going to, instead of using the edge, we're going to have to go back to using the, the rest of the brush more standard and just ever so gently brush it. Um, let's do, I'm not going to do that bolt. I'm going to actually paint that bolt a different color. And I'm just going to do the back of his gauntlet here. Just a little bit. And down the side. All right. The goal here is just these little highlights are just going to add a little bit of extra ump to the miniature. Now, I could do this portion of the elbow. So let's get a little more. Need some control. You'll notice one of the things I'm doing is I'm bracing my hands against each other and actually then bracing them against the table. And this just gives you that extra little bit of stability. If you think about any engineering you did or if you ever built a spaghetti bridge in science class or something like that, the triangle being a strong um, force. And one of the strongest ones that we can use in architecture. And similarly, um, and if you never took science class, like if maybe, you know, or maybe you forget science class um, and you uh, are a hunter or you um, like to target shoot and the platform of a triangle, the seated position is a, a classic example. Now I'm gonna do a little bit up this elbow pad because I'm just gonna catch the outside edge here and it'll give a little bit more definition right there. This is all really subtle work, right? And like I said, this is, you might take a look at this and say, wow, Jason, this is a lot of work for, you know, tabletop ready miniatures. Yeah, it is. Um, and if you don't enjoy it, you don't have to go to that level. But if you're thinking that, oh, you know, I'm going to go to this big competition and my my three color miniatures are going to give me what I need to win the championship, you're, you're going to be mistaken. Anything that judges your paint job along with your um, sportsmanship and uh, this one's going to be better to approach it this way, um, your painting you're going to be in stiff competition. And so taking the time, especially with your character models and your um, pseudo character models, like your 
Terminators. Let's face it, most of them, you're not going to have that many of them. It's going to be important. And if you really want to be serious about, about being at that top of your game, do this with your troops. Even if it's not the best, it's good practice. You know? One of the thoughts I'd had when I was thinking about this and doing the painting was actually digging out my Dark Angels, which are arguably painted to, you know, almost competitive play standard. Um, you know, with hand-painted iconography and stuff on the shoulder pads and whatnot. And... Um, taking them and upgrading them because that's another tool if you've got a painted army right now that's like yeah it's you know it's my older work or what have you they are a waiting canvas for you to try a new technique to jazz them up all right so the knee pads are my bane Round shapes are a pain. Now what I'm going to do, once I get this, I'm going to just get the top of this knee pad. And it's a bit messy. You probably can't see. But I've got like, you know, like a three mil smudge. <laughs> really there. So what I'm going to do is I can take one of my other brushes, get the Flesh Terrors uh, contrast paint in there, and I can just touch it up. Again, just fine touch up. And that's why I do the edge highlighting at this stage of the game. The one thing with it, using a fine brush like this is you don't get buckets on the palette at a time to work with. All right, so now we're going to do bottom part of the greave here. And if you don't get the whole thing, that's okay. There's a an old saying, or a saying that I heard a long time ago, so we're going to assume it's an old saying, that if you can't get your brush there, no one's going to see it anyway. And there's a certain amount of truth to that. And definitely when you're not, you know, you're not aiming to win a Golden Demon or some ma major painting competition, you just want to take your painting to the next level. This is a good technique that you can focus on certain areas of the model, right? So, like, we're just focusing on some highlights here. Working my way around, I really need to hit the uh, this side of the pauldron, because I haven't touched that yet. All right. Just get a little more control. Developing a bit of a hook on the end of my brush, and that happens sometimes. I honestly don't know how to fix it. Short of getting like a hobby knife out and just cutting off. It could be just some goop. Even though I'm thinning down my paints, the water, it's not necessarily like. I don't know how well it's coming up on camera, but there's definitely some goop in there. So yeah. So you can see there's a little bit of red goop. Probably from pulling the paint from the pot. Got caught in the brush. So let's pull a little more paint from the pot. One of the things, um, I have used a wet palette, which extends the life of your paints when you're doing something like this. Um, and definitely is a benefit. And I'm thinking about going back to that since I'm kind of reinvigorating my uh, my love of painting. And now I also see that there's a secondary, because understanding, sometimes it's just nice to understand how, how the armor works, right? So Terminator plate in this particular case is actually plates on plates. So we've got, uh, uh, there's an under pauldron, which I was just doing, and then the over pauldron right here, I can also hit. So you get, you're gonna add a little bit of depth. 
and especially if you did like I did. So like I totally took a shortcut by using the contrast paints when I painted these. But I think that's a fine option. This is another way. This is like the other option for when you're doing this. And it's almost taking an edge highlight and mixing it with a bit of a dry brush technique. So what I'm going to do is I need to just hit this tiny little section right here. So I'm just going to kind of rub my brush along it like that. There's nothing underneath, so I have that option. I could do it here as well. Oops, a little bit bright, but that's okay. So we've got that, we've done that. So now we're kind of into his face. So I'm going to actually start with this light. Oops, that was a little heavy. Might have a little bit too much paint on the brush. That's okay. I might actually even lighten this top part up a bit by adding a second highlight of um, maybe a bit of yellow. We'll see. Once I can, I'll make that decision once I've decided what I'm doing with those lenses in there. Um, let's just pull a little paint off the brush. Back to our palette. So getting in here, I'm going to just focus on these big ridges on the helmet. And that's for two reasons. The first is time. Not necessarily time tonight, but if I'm going to do all these, like I've got a dozen of these guys that i got to do, and I'd like to have them <coughs> excuse me, all to the same stage before the next, you know, from two weeks from now. Um, then I also, like their eyes I need to do, and I need to get in there, and that's a lot of, so the cheeks like down here, This part of the cheek, totally I can tackle that right now. And down in the rebreather, you know, the filter, we can hit those. But this highlight on the eye, and even like this ridge under this square plate, I'm not going to touch. I'll hit the nose. Hit the nose. Feel free to drop a comment if you can tell me what movie that was from. Um, it's also a great time. I should have done this at the beginning. Um, if you're just hanging out here for the first time, it'd be awesome. If you like uh, geeky stuff, throw a like on the video um, and think about subscribing. This is a hobby channel that is itself a hobby for me so it's not like I'm concerned about trying to make a living off this I need to just not touch these guys up right there um, it's not a not a living for me but you know I would love my part of my goal with doing this is you know, just giving people a place to chill and hang out. And the more people that are hanging out, excuse me, the better. Partly because then you guys can help decide the sort of content you want to see. So I got this rivet over here. Let's just do the top of that. And I did this, but I didn't do the very top of this helmet right there. And what we're going to do, so we've done the helmet, got that. I'm just going to do along this ridge here. You know, it's one of those things, and one of the, the differences that I'm doing with this, when I was thinking about, not say this channel, or even the, the Hobby Night stream, but uh, when I decided to put this focus on, and I'm going to 
thank my buddy Kurt, who plays World of Tanks with me on my Sunday night streams most weeks. It's on twitch.tv slash allaboutthegeek. Again, the link is in the video description. Um, he was the one who suggested that I, you know, asked, was, was I using this as tutorials? I'm like, no, but, but I bloody could. Um, all right. So we're going to do the top of his gorget here. Gorget, as they say in the audiobooks. Because let's just butcher a French word. Gorget is a not the most accurate term for this either. But whatever. It's really a breastplate on some versions of the armor. Not necessarily on the Terminator plate, but in some versions it almost borders on breastplate slash bevoir. So we're just going to get this piece here. And there's like three little rivets so I'm going to ignore. And we're going to get down here. So this is where I... I'm going to draw the line. So there are very clearly some segmented sections down here. But the reality is there's not a lot of light. Now I could, now I wasn't definitely doing any sort of light direction concept when I was doing this. Like I'm literally edge highlighting every surface, not thinking that there's a single light source over here. Um, luminescence based highlighting is not something I've done. I haven't even dabbled with it. It's something I'd like to do some point. Um, but uh, I'm not doing it here. But the idea of trying to get into these pieces and get the edge highlight and then have that preserved after doing the various other accoutrements, um, I may go back and do that at the end of the model, but I'm sure not going to do it now. All right. So working our way this way, we've covered this plate. We've covered this leg. We've covered the helmet. We've covered the gorget. Now we're going to move on to this leg down here. Now again, we're going to leave the back separate for example purposes to go up on the Facebook page. Um, and I'll put a link to that in the video description later. Um, but uh, now what we're going to do is we're going to do the front of this leg and then we've got this arm. And we'll finish up with the power fist. All right, so a little more paint on the brushes, the brush, check it, got good control. All right, so let's do this. I almost want to call it a Wusson plate. Um, there's different, like when I think about historic armor this these sorts of plates kind of existed but they they wouldn't have hung off the hips like that right it's um there were tassés which kind of hung more off the front um of, uh, especially uh gothic armor and again so again that round piece i've totally over smudged it. I don't know if you can see how much I've smudged it, but I'll fix that. Clearly I need to sort out uh, some thing with the, the camera here to get um, better when we're doing this sort of color separation. Um, all right, so we'll do the top of the boot here. And that one really stands out because there's a lot of dark from the where the contrast went in. And I was lazy and didn't clean up. This is not, this is a mold line that I didn't clean up, which I should have. Um, we're gonna do the front of this exoskeleton piece here. I need to get a 
little bit more. There we go. And just over to this side. Okay, and see there I did a big whoops. Because I was trying to do a little bit of edge and I wound up just schmoop. Now I could probably leave it and it wouldn't matter. I mean, also, honestly, these are going to be used primarily for playing Space Hulk the board game. And are not going to see any competition, but that's all right. But I'll probably fix it just because I don't like it. I don't like it. And it's your miniature. At the end of the day, you do what you want with it. You paint it how you want. Um, the only caveats I have for that are... Don't paint your miniature red like a blood angel and then try to say it's a space wolf. Or a dark angel. Own the chapter you're part of. Now, if you're painting some other um, second founding chapter, cool. But... I've had more than one person say, well, I don't want to commit my guys to being this chapter because, you know, when the next codex drops, they may not be the, the flavor of the month. And I'm like, you know what? Grow a pair. Pick a chapter and stick with it. I have stuck with the blood, the dark angels. Wow, that really got super bright there. Okay. Um... I've been rolling Dark Angels since 93. And they're the business, as far as I'm concerned. Don't get me wrong. I want to paint some Space Wolves. I'm painting some Blood Angels right now. I mean, half the reason I bought the Space, Wolf, Space Hulk box set was to give me an excuse to paint some cool Blood Angel miniatures. That doesn't mean I'm going to run out and buy boxes of the Sons of Sanguinius. All right, so that pauldron's going to need some touch-up. So I'll show you how I'm going to touch that up uh, once I finish up the power fist here. And that's usually what I would also recommend, is finish the stuff, the step you're on before you go back and fix things. So I'm going to finish up my edge highlighting, and then I'm going to grab my flesh tears and come back and just touch up the places where I went a little overboard. So on the power fist, we've got this inside wrist bit. And hit that. And once again, I'm hitting these pieces because they're the parts that I want to hit. You hit what you want, but again, try to hit enough stuff that it makes a difference. And if you want to do that directional highlight, that's cool too. But that's, uh, a, like I said, a bit more advanced than I'm going to get into at some point, I might just do a video where I try it, following the steps of um, another painter. And say, okay, so Duncan Rhodes did a tutorial on, you know. Okay. Is it back? Okay. Sorry about that. It appears that my streaming PC decided to install Windows updates in the middle of my frickin' stream. Screw you, Microsoft. And so it rebooted. All right. Um, so where was I? We were talking the Power Fist. Yes, that's what I was talking about. Um, so with the Power Fist, and I'm just totally just way overloading the paint here. There we go. Um, I've never sure should the power fist be um, lightning bolty or just the same color. I'm going with just the same color in this particular instance, obviously. Um, I am going to do a power sword effect um, on this one. Um, and probably figure out something special with a thunder hammer. So we will look at a couple of different things. The lightning claws likewise will likely get the um, 
aforementioned lightning name. You know, they're called lightning claws, so there should be some... There ought to be some bloody lightning on them. I'm doing a really bad thing. I should be shaking that pot between each loadout. That's why people don't do this. All right. Very nearly done. And now the back of the glove, I'm going to do this. Now there is, because of how this particular model is molded, there isn't a firm line there the whole way. It's kind of muddy. If I was going to, if I was going to enter this squad's winter paint competition, I probably would have trimmed that to make a sharp edge. Um, let's just do a full reset here for a second. All right. Well, that is suitably. Pulled the little bits of red paint out of the brush that have dried up. And this is one of those things they just don't talk about. Like you got to keep your brush clean when you're doing this sort of thing. And you just don't see that a lot of times. That's part of why I wanted to do this sort of content. Because also when you see people doing, oh, I'm painting, I'm going to do a I'm painting a whole army in 24 hours, so you see the whole thing, but in time lapse, right? So you don't see the the faffing about with the brush and that sort of thing. Um, all right, so now we got the back part of the gauntlet. There's nothing left there. All right. So we'll just like this. Grab that piece. There we go. And same thing we did with this other elbow cop. We're just going to grab that high ridge. And it's not really pronounced enough for us to do the... Um, the edge bits so we're gonna more or less draw the line on very thinly just like that and it's okay if it wavers right like we're representing the light catching a piece of armor it's going to waver a bit um, and then we just do down here where the hose connects power and this bit down here. And there we go. Now it's taken more or less, let's call it 45 minutes. Well, not even. Let's call it 40 minutes because there was the preamble stuff. So 40 minutes and I, t you know, stepped up overall how that model looks. Now I do need to do some tidy up. So this is another reason to have a small layer brush or something like that kicking around. And I do have a, like I said, I have a habit of licking my brushes. Is it good? No, it's not a good habit to have. Do I care? Not really. All right, so now I'm just gonna use some of this and with the contrast paint, we can mostly use it right out of the pot. So, it's going to cover up the worst of that mistake. Now, contrast paints are not the easiest to touch up with. I will not deny that. That is the curse of the touch up of the the 
contrast paints or the price you pay for using them is that if you decide to do an extra layer of highlighting, it is not nearly as easy to touch up as if you were just painted this red, right? So that is, there's always a trade off, right? I don't think there's anywhere else. Like I actually, I'm, I'm pretty happy. Overall, not too much. I feel I need to touch up. If I was really concerned about this, this pauldron here, where it's a little on the brighter side, I'd probably just do a little thin, I'd thin this down a little bit and just wipe over the whole thing, but I'm not going to for this purpose. I think I'll get close enough for my goals on here. And when I, I'll cover edge highlighting again on a non-contrast painted miniature, like a Ravenwing. I've got some Ravenwing models I want to do, probably when I get the new um, Dark Angel Codex. But I think that's going to be it for now. Thank you so much for joining in. Um, as I said, uh, way later than I should have. Uh, please uh, subscribe if you haven't already. Um, there's more content on the way, including my new as of last week, um, uh, speed run segments, which are just the accumulation of the last week's hobby news. And there's some great stuff and I'll be covering a couple of Kickstarters coming up. I also am going to be doing a video dedicated to should you back that Kickstarter. Um, look for that probably next week as well, but that's it. Thank you again. Um, I hope you learned uh, enough about edge highlighting that you're comfortable going ahead and doing it on your own. I think it's a great way to take a mini that you painted with contrast paints and just bringing that level up a little bit. Until next time, work your wonk, wear your mask, stay safe. It's bloody cold out there tonight, so stay warm.